good to be here. We're blessed that we can come to a house where we're all of like spirit, like faith, like precious faith. Isn't that wonderful that we've received the faith of God? Isn't that good? Say, I have the faith of God. Jesus is the author of this faith. And he is developing this faith. I have faith in God. His grace is enough. I have faith in his blood. Now release your faith in these things. I have faith in the cross. I have faith in his resurrection. I'm confident in him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'd ask you to stand on your feet with me just for a second, please. And let's just worship the Lord here just for a minute all together. Let's turn our hearts toward him, turn the day off. Thank you, Father. May we never forget that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He's in you. He's on you. He's through you. He's behind you, in front of you. He's your way maker. He's the cloud that went with him. He's the pillar of fire. Hallelujah. He's the manifester now of the everything that was alive in the earth ministry of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is that for us now. Thank God he's in us, he's sealed us, he's marked us, he's cut us out for his own. He has bought you. You've been paid for, you've been acquitted. You're not guilty. The verdict has been released and it says not guilty. You can come boldly to the throne of God by faith in right, right into his presence because of your faith in Jesus. Father, we worship you tonight. Let's all sing this, sing this together. Real simple it says, Hallelujah. Say it again. Hallelujah. And again. Hallelujah. Our God reigns.
Would you sing it one more time with me, please?
for the glory of God, heavy with everything good, and it belongs to us. We're family. We have the we bear the name of our Father. Glory to God, and we worship you tonight. We worship you and we praise you, and we're so blessed to come into the presence of peace. Where your presence is, there is love, there is joy, there's peace, there's kindness, there's hesed agape, there's unchanging mercy, there's compassion, the very seat of your love. We thank you for all the different rivers that flow out of one throne. We thank you that every need will be met tonight in this room, in your presence. We declare liberty by the spirit of faith. I believe in my heart and I say to every one of you and I speak over you now in the name of Jesus, you are redeemed. You are redeemed from spiritual separation from God. You are redeemed from poverty and lack. You are redeemed from pain, sickness, grief, and disease. You are the redeemed and I say so. I, I, I pray the blessing of God over you, that, that every spiritual blessing that, is, that became yours when you said yes to Jesus, I pray that God would continue to increase exceedingly your faith and the love of God in you, for God, from God, and to the body of Christ. And I believe that 2020 will be your best year yet, best year to present date. Father, we give you the glory and we're confident in this because your word promises us and we have faith in the promise of God. Amen. God bless you tonight. Would you shake a hand or hug somebody tonight, please? Hug them in faith. Give them a hug in faith. Yeah. Hug them in faith. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I can go home right now and say it's good to have been there, he said. <laughs> hey, hey, amen, 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 amen. We welcome everybody watching online. Thank you for tuning in. We, we release our faith for you tonight in the name. Our faith is in the name. Faith in the name. Faith in the name. Faith in the name. Faith in the name of Jesus. Faith in the name. Say, I have faith in the name. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I'd like for you to get your tithe or your offering. And I want to just say a couple things right quick before we receive. How many of you desire to be willing and obedient? Not just obedient. Cain was obedient. Abel was willing and obedient. We're going to, I want to just read a couple of scriptures to build our faith. It's important. It's so important that we understand that faith has been deposited into you. And I like the way the Passion says it in Romans 10, 17. The King James would say faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that is, that it is true. And in that context, he's talking about people that have never heard the gospel. How will they believe except somebody preach the gospel? So we see faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But the passion really, really, really nails it really good. And it says faith is birthed in the heart that responds to God's living voice. I don't know that you could translate it better than that. Because faith doesn't, it does come. But when you step out in obedience, it roots in you. That's when it becomes, now it went from God's faith that came to you to daughter your faith. Are you following me? So it's good that faith cometh, but what do I do with what cometh? See? So I just want us to look at two little passages right quick, two verses. Um, yeah, look at there. Faith then, read it, is birthed in a heart so that's inner man. Faith is an inner man thing. Never forget that. Faith is an inner man thing. 
It's birthed in a heart that responds to God's anointed utterance of the anointed one. I mean, that is just, he, that, that man nailed the translation. So, right quick, look at Hebrews 11, verse 4. Read, read this, this one verse. of the 
ground to the Lord. Now listen, the Hebrew word is mincha, which is donation. Cain brought a donation. It's not donation time, it's tithe time. Come on, saints. It's tithe time is, what he, is the time. And people have said, well, you know, it's what he brought that wasn't pleasing to God. No, God lays it out clear with Moses that what Cain brought was pleasing to God was an acceptable sacrifice. But with God, even before law, God's desire has always been to live by faith, love by faith, obey by faith. You see what I'm saying? And so verse 4 says, Abel brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. It's interesting if you was to ask yourself, how did Cain know that his offering wasn't acceptable to God? Somehow there was communication. How did he know that didn't please God? And we know he knew because his countenance fell. The next verse, God's asking him, why are you angry? And he gives him a second chance. I want you to also notice that he, he said, God respected Abel and his offering, but he didn't respect Cain and his offering. I represent my offering, but more than that, my offering, not the amount, but what is in my offering represents me. Do you see that? And so we know from what we read in Hebrews that the thing that God respected about Abel's offering was faith. Huh? Abel did it. I believe God. Huh? This is God's. Are you with me, saints? He didn't respect Cain's. Well, God's not a respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of faith. What Smith Wigglesworth say, God will pass over 10,000 people to get to one who's in faith. The crowd's thronging him. One woman who touched him in faith left whole. Nobody else got nothing in that setting. Are you here with me? So I ask you to give what God would tell you to give. Outside of the tithe, 10% is the tithe. That's biblical. Outside of that, our prayer is, God, what would you? Have? what is our part in this offering? God, what would you have us give? Are you with me? I think that's where people... Uh, what they're basically doing is just tying faith and releasing faith when they say name your seed. Basically, you could just say release faith. But it's easy to release faith. Maybe it's easier if you designate, and I'm naming this. Really what you're doing is you're putting faith with what you're giving. You see what I'm saying? Naming your seed isn't what moved God. Faith is what moved God. God doesn't change. Faith moves. You see what I'm saying? And so tonight as you give, give with faith attached to it. I mean, put your hands on it. Speak on to it. I put my faith in this. God is my source. Are you following me tonight? Release faith with it. Don't ever just put it in the bucket. Release your faith with it. Believe God. I'm believing God. My, I, I, I receive my breakthrough. I receive the harvest on this seed. Are you with me tonight? I believe God is rebuking devourers for my sake. Why? Because I'm a tither. Are you with me? So release your faith tonight when you, when, you, when you give to God. Father, it's with cheerful hearts, pure hearts, and the motive of only love. And we thank you, Father, that according to the Gospels and according to your word, Jesus is aware of how we give. Not just what we give, but how we give. We desire to please Jesus. We thank you, Father. We pray that you'd look down and that you would see faith because that pleases you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we receive the harvest, the reaping off of this seed. And everyone who's tithing tonight, we declare the word of God. We believe it in our heart and say with our mouth that God rebukes the devourer for your sake. We thank you, Father, for breakthroughs. We thank you that you're the God of the breakthrough. We thank you for faith in God tonight and faith on our, our offering. And I thank you, Father, that you are the one who multiplies it. We speak multiplication upon it. 
We thank you, Father, that it'll meet every need. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, thank you so much. God bless everybody tonight. Would you welcome our speaker tonight, please? <laughs> God, that was good. Truly, if we went home now, we could say we've been blessed. That is good. Y'all ready for some part two? Get your pens out. Get the Holy Ghost pen out. You don't. You know the Holy Spirit's going to speak to you tonight, and you know the devil's going to try to steal it from you. So you know you need to jot something down. Might be one word. I've come in here and during praise and worship, how to break through and quickly wrote it down. I mean, when, when, you're in the, when you're in the spirit, God can start answering the matter. I could be talking, uh, Pastor Jason, Pastor Jody could be talking, and God could just give you the answer to a naughty problem. Because you're in his presence, and he can slip it in there. So that's why I have my Holy Ghost pen ready, because he might want to tell me something. He might want to remind me of something, underline something. So absolutely, I only got four pages, so you know. Y'all ready? I can tell you're ready. You know, a lot of it depends on how much y'all want, how much I'm able to give. All right? So you got to be hungry. So um, when Pastor Jason and Jody was on the cruise, how many of you remember uh, was here when I talked on the message about judging? Uh this is part two. I want to say lock the doors. <laughs> uh, this thing has changed my life. There's things that's changed. It's from glory to glory. But I'm telling you, God gave me a wake-up call with this, and I believe, I believe it's sincerely one of the keys to the kingdom because there's such a polarization in America, and the devil wants us to judge. Because he knows if he can get you to violate God's uh, law, you've opened the door. House divided will fall, you know. And so it's rampant out there, you know, when God plainly says don't judge. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, it takes the grace of God not to judge. Why is that? So I'm going to do a little uh, review on uh, judging, and then I'm going to try my best to get over at the Lively Stones because this is, uh, we want to talk about the weapons of mass destruction, and I'm all into weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> Justin's like, oh, no, she's got the props out. <laughs> Here we go. It's coming back. So in passing review, in December, I had a bigger pie, but since we were reviewing, I got a smaller one. It's a joke. Y'all lighten up. We're talking about judging, right? Let's talk a little bit about that. Why do we do what we do? It all started in the garden. Say the garden. This represents your will. This is the strongest thing. The strongest thing that you possess is this pie. Buttermilk, evidently. Pumpkin was out. Your will is what Satan wants. He has to have your will in order for him to do destruction. You have to give him place, which means you have to give him part of your will, which means you have to choose. Say choose. It says... Whom you yield your, your servant to obey, his servant you will obey, whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. So you notice there's none of you in there. It's what you choose because the devil knows the power that you hold is your will. The more wholeness that you can have your will, so you want me to... <laughs> The more wholeness that you have in your will, the more you can release your power to speak to your body. And before you get out of here, this earth, you're going to have to have faith to receive and faith to take hold of the healing power of God. Not only for you, but for your children. You need the faith to believe. You know what? Uh, 
uh, it's been spoken that this is the year of uh, we're going to see great miracles. I believe that. I believe. I believe one of this is a key. I'm telling you, the more wholeness you have, the more that you have your will intact, the more you have the power, the confidence. This is the confidence we have before God that, you know, if our heart doesn't condemn us, and if I can say one thing that I've seen, I've seen a confidence growing inside of me because I'm a, I watch my words, I guard my heart because I'm keeping my will intact. The more I can keep my will intact, then the more I have faith to release it. Now, in the garden, when Adam and Eve partook of the tree of good and evil, now listen, when they took of that, we actually signed up, all the offsprings thereof, we actually signed up to judge. To have the knowledge of good and evil, that came on us, and that equals to judging. It is so flippin' easy to know you're right, you're wrong. Even Kennedy, and she's just fixing to turn eight, we, we, had, we went, took her out to Princess Palace. Of course, it's Eastern Palace for you, but for her, it's, it's Princess Palace. And they had the carnival up, and she said, well, that, well, they're just in the way in the parking lot. That is just wrong. They need to move. And I thought, there it goes already. There we are already at eight, Lord, you know. Because it is in us. It is in the, listen, say default. It is in your default for you to want to decide who's right and who's wrong. I mean, you're just there. And the devil loves it. He wants for you to give voice to that because when you choose to say something, when you judge, when you decide the motive of someone's heart, not the actions you can look at, but then you decide on the action, the motive behind it, then you've crossed over, then you've become the judge, and God says, don't judge, lest you be judged. And listen, not only that, with the same measure you measure out, it'll get measured back to you. And boy, I don't like that. Because I've had some pretty nasty. But here's the deal. When I get in someone's else judge, deciding they're right or they're wrong, and I, and I reminded y'all, Facebook is full of it. Twitter, Instagram, I mean, someone's on there, and immediately, oh, that's so right. They're so wrong. That's so wrong. And then you are crossing over into, and you don't need, listen, two things are happening. There's always another side. How many of you know that? You know, Proverbs, um, let me go to it. Just, you might want to remember this one. Proverbs 18, 17. The first one to plead his case, his cause seems right until his neighbor comes and examines him. There's always two sides to everything. I learned that counseling and marital counseling because you counsel them together. You counsel one and, oh, he held me down, he held me down. And then you talk to him, it's like, she was trying to kill me. I had to hold her down. <laughs> oh, the rest of the story. There is a way that seemeth right in the man, but the end thereof is the way of death. We're, listen, we're not capable of rightly discerning what is right and what is wrong. That's why God said, don't do it. Now, let me say this. God does say to rightly discern by the Spirit. You, ha you can discern by the Spirit, and the Spirit will bear witness. I mean, Paul was in the Bible, and do this and do that. So we have that. But when I sit down as the judge, and I decide who's right and who's wrong, now I've become a law unto myself. And when you become a law unto yourself, then you, then you line up to be judged by the whole law. And no one can do that. And so that's why God said, don't judge. In fact, he says, you are inexcusable, O you that judge. For when you judge, you're guilty of the very same thing. Because you can say, oh, they, they was lying to me. And you want to go, and you've never lied. Mm -hmm. They did this. And you want to go, and you've never done something like that. Who am I? And here's the thing. I lock down mercy. Mercy given, mercy received. When I decide who's right or wrong, when I decide and I put the motive behind it, now I've crossed over and I, now, how many of you know that we need mercy and it's fresh every day and we need to operate in it? So, but when I reach forth and I start judging, listen, it's the easiest thing to do. 
Remember the story. I was doing and working up this series, and I went into the chiropractor, and there's someone I knew. Sat down, and they started telling me about their, their um, this is rubbing or something. I don't know what it's doing. Uh, they started telling me about their, um, their daughter, and they're living with uh, their in-laws, and she was saying this. And I went, well, that's just wrong. I mean, I was in the middle of this, and there I was, and God was going, <clears throat> excuse me, what are you working on? Because listen, it's so flipping easy. It is so easy. Listen, it, maybe it's not the big things, but it's the little things. It's so easy to go when someone's hurting like, oh, well, they're so wrong. You don't know. Listen, and I can empathize. I can empathize and go, I can see you're in a lot of pain. And I, I pray that God heals you. Now, have I picked a side? You don't have to either. God says, stay away from that. Because now what happens is this. When you start judging, you choose, and this is what happened. You give your power, your power source, and this pie is not coming out like the other one. Boom. Now look, when I choose, when I start slicing off my will, I weaken my will. Now what? I've given place for the devil to have havoc in my life. Because I've crossed over and I've started judging. Now, I'm going to tell you, it five pages to convince me, and I told y'all, listen, you've got to know what the Word says, and you have to understand this. You have to have the Holy Spirit to be able to go, what? I mean, I've excused myself. I've apologized. I've backed up. But I'm learning to not to condemn myself ever because it's never of God when I do that I just learn to oh, I'm back 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 up mm, I'm not going to do that because I'm guarding my heart out of it flows the issues of life I don't want to give place to the devil I don't want to give and so if I'm starting out this and I'm slicing it time I get on Facebook boom 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 and Twitter doo, doo, and I meet people in Walmart and then there's that husband and then there's those kids, and then them dog, and there's Walmart. Man, you want to exercise this, go to Walmart. It's so easy to go there. It is our default. It takes the grace of God for us not to go there. But there's an inheritance, and there's a blessing, and God said, I will, listen, because I keep my will whole, I open the door wide to receive the miracles and the blessings and the inheritance that God has for me. I don't want to give place to the enemy. Now listen, why? Why is that? Why did God just set that up? Why did God, like, do that? Because now listen, this is where we're going to go tonight. We're going to talk about lively stones. This is where God is asking me to go with this. And I'm asking you to sign up. Because you can be a weapon of mass destruction here in Brownwood, Texas. The reason why God has said for us not to judge. Because we can't, we can't rightly discern. God, only God knows them. You know what? And Jeremiah says, you don't even know the own condition of your own heart. You don't even know. I'm telling you, you can sit there and see and watch it happen, and you cannot rightly discern it. And sit there and blame and blame and blame and blame. And if you don't take it to God, you really don't know. And I'm going to tell you something. If you tell, every, time, every time you have something that comes up that's emotional about things that happen, every time it comes up, Carolyn Leaf says this. The Word also says this, too. Backs it up. It's this. Every time a thought or a feeling comes up, it's the most vulnerable it ever will be, and it will never go back the same. Which means this. If you start feeling all the pain inside of you, then, listen, it gets reinforced. If it comes up, that's the time you can actually, that's why he said to pull those thoughts down. That's the time you pull it down. That's why you got the Holy Spirit to go, now you've got it weakened, let's go for it. But if you start feeling the pain and talking the pain, listen, then it gets exaggerated. And it gets, it gets in agreement, it gets exaggerated, it gets farther from the truth. 
which means you can have years and years later and you can think this is how it is and Pastor Jody was telling us about someone who thought something for 10 years and come to find out wasn't even the truth. If you say it enough, you will believe it. So you can't trust your feelings. Your suke is what the uh, Bible talks about, the Greek. So you can't trust that. But you can trust the Holy Ghost. So you engage Him. Now you have your will intact. Now when you say, speak into your leg or speak into your body or speak into that checkbook, there's more power available. If I watch what I'm saying... I have more power available. But the reason why I need a napkin is because it can get kind of messy, can it not? Yes, <laughs> and the reason is this, because there's a law that goes into effect when I speak things. There's a law. You know what? Gravity is working right now, whether we believe it or not. It doesn't take a day off, does it? A law is a law that's constant and it stays the same. The reason why God has said, don't judge, lest you be judged, and what you measure be measured back to you, is this. It's called this, the law of the seed. Let's go to the lively stone and let's look. What does the law of the seed have to do with me judging? All right? So go this. Genesis 8, 22. It's going to start on page 1. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. So seed time is natural. Listen. But it's also spiritual. Do you know your words are seeds? It is a container. You think it's just a... Listen, the last thing... On the second rim of what words do is communication. The top rim, it is a seed, it is a container. It, behind that container, there's power. And you're releasing life or you're releasing death. You're releasing life or you're releasing death. From your heart is what you say. And if you notice, when a farmer plants a, plants a seed, he never gets just one seed back, does he not? Because the law of the seed is in effect here on earth. What is sold in one multiplies. Listen, good, we want that. We're all over that one, but also bad. So it's vital we understand this law so that you understand, boy, now I don't, and I've got power to do, and also there's a blessing. I'm, I'm going to get to the blessing. There's a blessing on the other end of this thing. It's always a blessing when you're obedient to God. Always. It's always a blessing when you're obedient to God. So there's natural and spiritual. Whatever you plant, you're going to reap more. God's not mock. When a man sow, what? That he shall also reap. By your words, you'll be justified. By your words, you'll what? Be condemned. You see, you can release. And, be, and, and here's the thing that the devil doesn't want you to know. When you violate God's law, then you open it up for him to give place. But you do that, and you're not even recognizing that you're judging. It's so easy to do it because it's the default. I'm going to tell you again. That's why God said you need a comforter. You need someone to come back to remind you of these things. We have the answer inside of us. We have the one. I engage him every day. All right, God, show me when I try to go there. Because I'm going to tell you something. It says in Romans that the carnal nature is an enemy against the law of God. It's not subject to the law of God. Neither can be. But now listen, it is subject to you. It is subject to you. You know, here's the thing that, that keeps you out of guilt and condemnation. You're never going to get up one day, Ty, and go, I have arrived. I'm arrived. I don't have, you know, judging's not even a part of me now. You're dead. <laughs> and in heaven. <laughs> as long as you're in this body, there's this suke thing, this affection, these feelings that try to go south on you. And just get over it that you're, you know, that we've got that. But God said that we can control it. Have you ever said, I can't believe I said that? Am I the only one? I know. I think, 
and I'm a pro pastor. Hello? What does that got to do with it? Nothing. Nothing. Because you know what? You never arrive. One of the things that's kept me balanced from condemning myself is quit trying to save the suke. God said to possess your soul. God said to mortify the flesh. So when you try to, I ought to by now, that's never of God. All I have to do is, oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. You're not going to. See, I just talk to that flesh like it's a, a rebellious child because it is. And as long as I'm here, I've got a rebellious child. I grow stronger. I have more control over it. But you know what? I still got the rebellious child. So when it tries to raise its ugly head up, I don't get all condemned. And, oh, I can't believe I thought that. Well, that's because rebellious childs do dumb things. But who's in control? You just got to make sure you're in control. Your spirit man is in control every day. And the more I can control my flesh, the more I control these words, the more power I can release when I need to release. And I'm going to tell you, there's times when you need to release. And this is the year to release. All right. So, now look, Luke 6, 38, we've all heard this. I've heard this many a time. And it is a great word because the law of the seed is really working. And this, this is a real good scripture to show that out. Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and rolling over, shall men give unto your bosom. So with the same measure, see, this is a, this, there's that law. With the same measure you measure out, it should be, me there's an intensity. What you measure out will be measured back. What you give one will be spread more. All right? Which is great, but the verse above that says, judge not. What? Judge not. I wanted to scratch it out too, but it's there. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Right there in that scripture, because it's the law of the seed, both good, both bad. God's saying, listen, you leave the judging to me. Just give them to me. Let me be the one. You just do what, what he said, have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ right above that talks about loving your enemies. Yes, Anyone got any enemies? Any of y'all got any enemies? Don't raise your hands because every one of you got an enemy. <laughs> you got the devil, but there's something with a face on it too. Because <laughs> if you live here long enough, you're going to have someone that don't think you're pretty cool. Who don't like you? Can I get an Amen. So in Luke 6, 35, it says, love your enemies. Do you know, listen, you've got the love of God that's been shed abroad in your heart. You have the capacity to love those that don't love you because you've got Jesus inside of you. You have that ability. I've been in front of people that have spit in my face. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And when they did, it was like warm bath water. It was like, whoa, God, what are you doing? He's just loving me while someone was spitting at me. God upholds you. You do what he's asked you to do. God wants you to love those that don't love you. He said, you know what? He said this. He said, if you love the people that, that love you, he said, what reward is that? Even the heathens do that. But what about loving those that are unlovable? You know, there are people that are unlovable out there. For some reason, everyone's going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yes, we all once were. And have the ability to go there. Love your enemies and do good. And, and the scripture right below it, just listen. Matthew 5, 44. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that spitefully use you and persecute you. What in the would I want to 
for what reason is the law of the seed? Mercy given, mercy received. That you may be children of your Father which is in heaven, for he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sends rains on the just and the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward do you have? No faith. No faith. Let's go. I want to I I so quickly go to the next one. 2 Corinthians 6, 11. Oh, you Corinth, this is Paul. Oh, you Corinthians, our mouth is open wide in you. Our heart is enlarged. You're not straightened. You're not narrowed in us, but you are narrowed in your own bowels. In your bowels is, in other words, for affections. You, you know what? We're here trying to speak to you, and, it, and you're not receiving us, but it's not because of us. It's because of you, because of the narrowness of your affections. Now for a recompense, I speak as children, be enlarged. Have you ever known people that are just not open? Sure. We've all been there. And I'm going to tell you something. We're there in part, too. There's still things in there that can rile me up. I have to, I have to be I, slow to speak means this. I give my spirit man enough time to get up there and choke my suke from shutting up. Because your flesh will go first. And your spirit's going, wait, wait, wait. And if you'll just give it time, your spirit man will grab that tongue and go, no. So, listen, there, there, 15 years ago, I was out at River Park, and there was a, a gander of geese. I don't know if I'm saying that right. So, yeah, lots of goose. <laughs> There's some gooses, but there's this one goose that was a gander, and that dude, girl, or whatever it was, was in charge of everything and was nasty, 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 nasty. And I told God 15 years ago, I know people like that. <laughs> I know people like that. I mean, he, she would get up, and she'd step over, and these little bitty ones, and she'd just I mean, just get them out of the way. And I thought, well, that is just so rude, and I just so wanted to do it. And I thought, that's a problem. You want to save everybody. You can't save nothing. Wisdom. But this is what he said. He said, speaking of gander and people like that, I died for people like that on the cross. He died for the unlovable. And they're out there. And whenever shot you a bird and pulled out in front of you? Go to Walmart. I mean, they rude. Rude, rude, rude. Pull out in front of you. Knock the whatever. You meet them all the day. You meet them all the time. You know, out there, that Home Depot thing where that's a four-way stop thing. It is not. It is just who's going to bust and get out there first. I mean, there's no rules here. It, I just have to just remind myself who's in control. Did I tell you the flesh is just good to eat? <laughs> Can I tell you, you want to win? Sometimes you want to win. So desperate you would pull out in front of somebody. I'm just saying. You're going to meet people like that. And you might be one. <laughs> well, I want to go to a scripture. I'm trying to get there. First Peter 2 says this. Whew, this is for people who've got pull-ups on and not in diapers. This is for the mature ones. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if so, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as to a living stone, disallowed of men but chosen of God, precious. Now listen. 
to a lively stone that's built up in a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices unto God. You are a chosen generation, peculiar people. This is why you're peculiar. He wants you to be a lively stone. He wants you. Now, listen, that lively means zo. It's a, a form of zoe. Zo, zoe. 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 <laughs> zoe. Which is the life of God. When you look that word up, it means to bubble, to burst forth, to gush. Now, a stone, a lively stone, is one that has no edges on it. It's one that's been washed by the water of the word, so all the rough edges are off of it. So when you encounter these people, you don't need to have a rough edge because it will rub you and them raw. How are we going to separate you from the world if you act like the world? God is looking for those that will be the round, smooth, by the washing of the word, stones. So when they encounter these people, then they just bounce back the love of God. Yes, bounce back the love of God. Because let me tell you something. They're close to God. They're in, 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 in the word, it says that the, they're being alienated in their mind being disobedient and their on their heart darkened. There are people out there that God wants to get to, but he can't. In John 17, when Jesus was speaking to the Father in the garden, he said, I've come down here. These things I've spoke unto them that their joy would remain. God had to send Jesus down here so that he could release things into the natural in order for things to happen. So things have to be spoken down here to be released. Now this is our job. When we encounter the unlovable, when they don't love you, and we bounce back the love of God, we actually open a window for God to be able to move for them. Listen, the law of the seed. And let me tell you something. For you. For you. That's why I'm saying a weapon of mass destruction. There are people in Walmart that are going to be rude to you. And you can, with your breath, pray for them. Don't mean you have to, oh, bless you, because it might hit you. But I'm saying when someone encounters you and they give you whatever, what comes out of you from faith, from your heart, listen, God needs you to help them. And God said this, if you'll do that, we'll go to Scripture. God said you'll inherit a blessing. I'm all into that. Yes, it's worth being nice. Because you do get something out of this. One thing, you're going to maintain this wholeness. And when that child is sick at night running a fever, you need your whole will to be released under this. But if you splinter it up because you've gotten and tweeted and Instagrammed and talked to people and you've told in this and you've decided who's right and wrong, which we're not capable of, then you haven't got much will to speak to that fever. Or your checkbook. How about miracles? We can do this, people. Because now listen, I'm not telling you something that you can't do. You got the Holy Ghost inside of you. I'm not saying I've been perfect. I don't have to be perfect. But I sure can. I'm learning to stop. And I pull it back in. And I forgive and send it away. Whew, I'm not going there. I don't have to judge. I don't have to judge. Now, Isaiah 54 says this. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every word that rises up to, rises up in, to you in judgment, God says this, you condemn. I'm not condemning the person. But if I hear words, I, every day I cover our church. I cover our pastors. 
And I say, if there's been any words that's been risen or spoken in judgment over me, over my husband, over the churches, over my pastors, I condemn those words. I don't have a face. I don't want to see a face. But I know words have been spoken because I know the devil. So when you see Fox News and you see all that news and you see people speaking, I don't have a face. I don't face. But I say, God, you judge that. And those words that's been spoken that don't lead to the United States being united under God, I condemn because they they're using words in judgment. I condemn those words. I have every right because this is the heritage, inheritance of the servant of the Lord, and that is who I am. God needs us condemning words more, but there has to be no face. I'm not condemning the person. I am condemning those words. Now that we can rightly discern. Now let's go to another scripture. First John 5, 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know we have the petitions that we ask of him. Now listen, here it is again that God is bringing out. If anyone, anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give life for those who commit sin. That's what God is asking us to do. Would you just release life on that? When you see evil, will you overcome it with good? Will you just bounce and will you just speak life to that? Because I can use that not only for them to open up a window for God to move, but I will bless you. It pays dividends. Because he's a rewarder of those that what? Diligently seek him. Because God is into the reward business. There is the sin leading to death. We won't get in that. We'll let my assistant talk about that. Because I want to go on. <laughs> Colossians, uh, yeah, give him a light word. Yeah, tell us about the sin that leads to death, you know, the unpardonable sin. Let's just, let's see you take it. Come on. Okay, Colossians 3, and he can. Colossians 3, 1 says, uh, 12 says this. Put on, therefore, as elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels, affections of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. Did you hear that? Forgiving one another? It says, for me to put on. Therefore, listen, I can put it on. Oh, now here's another thing. You have to put it on. <laughs> Two things. You have to put it on. <laughs> Did I tell you even if somebody is, when they tell you something and, and, and what they say is true, I mean, it, it, say it's true, and they did this and they did this and this, that still does not give you, it's not in the Word. I've worked, I've got five pages and four pages tonight. I've looked, I've tried to find it, people. It does, it does not say in there, you can agree with them. It does not. So it doesn't even matter if it's true. I can empathize with them, but I don't decide who's right or wrong. I don't decide the motive, yet they really meant to tell it. There is a way that seemeth right in man, but the end thereof is the way of death. I don't have the ability in a fallen nature to be able to go God is the judge, and he's the one who will uphold me. I give it to him, and you know what? He does recompense. And in the New Testament, that means he does rewards, and I'm all in to the flipping rewards. If I do my part, he always. Now listen, he's always, I access, I take hold of the provision. Because I've got a whole wheel involved. So I get to put it on. Nine minutes. Okay. First Peter 3. All right, let's go up to First John 4 because Pastor mentioned it before. If someone says, I love God and hate his brother, he's a liar. For, for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? You say you love God? Yes. If you say you love him, then you obey him. You do his, com you, you, you do his commandments. And it says in one, point, in one place that, that his commandments are not gruesome or burdensome. 
because I've got the love of God. I've seen, I've had the love of God when people come up to me and I know they're angry or they got an attitude or whatever. I, people point it to me and people are just, just, you know, when people give out ugly, it just means they're full of ugly. And it's not even about you. It's just that, just that they've got hate and they're just going to spread it. But I've had them come up to me and I've had the love of God just put a shield around me. In fact, that love has changed them. I've seen the power of God change it. I'm not saying every time, but I'm saying that love is powerful. It's a shield. He who loves God must love his brother also. Yeah, but you don't know what they've done, and you, you know, I mean, it's a cliche, but remember what he's done. It's because of what he's done. And he can heal the brokenhearted. I mean, that's, I'm not taking away from the pain if something was done to you. I'm not in all excusing what has been done to you by somebody. No. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Let me let's at least line it up. It's not even them. It's the devil that has used them. I'm not excusing that. But I am trying to get you out of jail. Because I'm telling you, if you wake up with that on your head, you wake up with that thought, if you, if you see them and you cringe, if you carry that, then listen, it's poisoning you. It's poisoning you. It's costing you, not them. Finally, my brethren, be of one mind, 1 Peter 3, 8 through 12. Have compassion of one another. Love is brethren. Be pitiful. Be courageous. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but counterwise blessing, knowing that here and to you've been called. Well, finally, we all know what we're being called to. That's our calling. That's our calling. We are to show forth the love of God. We're all called to that. Not one of us didn't get that. That you should, now here it is, inherit a blessing. You do and walk in the love of God. It opens up a door for them. But what you give out, and to the measure you give out, it will come back to you. This is going to be a great year for me because I'm going to walk in love and no one is going to get me out of the love of God. And forgive means to send away. And I can certainly do that. Send that thought, send that feeling, send that. And I don't feel condemned when thoughts come up, feelings come up. If I still see somebody and a feeling come up, then I'm not attacking them. I'm attacking that feeling that's attached to that face. Do you understand? Because I'm getting free. Say free. free. See, I just don't get condemnation. If uh, The thing I don't want you to leave here going, I ain't no way I can do this. I'm condemned already. I'm going to hell. No, you're not. You're human. And you got a sukke. you got a feeling thing inside of you. But that's not you. So quit trying to save it. God said just kill it. You have power over it, and you can put on love. You can put on vows of mercy. So I can put that on. Based on, listen, my feelings will eventually line up, but I'm not moved by my feelings. So if feelings happen, so what? So what? A feeling still comes up when someone shoots me the bird and pulls out in front of me. But then right there, I just, the Lord just blessed them. I opened the eyes, called scales off his eyes, where Satan has blinded him. Sent labors across his pathway, filled the Holy Ghost. Throw minister life to him. <sighs> Think I've done that before? There's another scripture in Psalms that says, Oh, Lord, my heart is not proud. You know when you judge, your heart's proud. Nor my eyes haughty. Surely I've composed and quieted my soul like a winged child that rests against his mother. Nor I involve myself in matters, listen, too difficult for me. Do you know it's just too difficult for you to decide who's right or wrong? That is just way outside your pay scale. Way outside your pay scale. Surely I've composed and quieted my soul. 
nor to embalm myself in matters too difficult for me, like a winged child that rests against his mother. Oh, Lord, my soul is like a winged child within me. I will say that a lot. It's a short, chap a ch short chapter. But it's kept me out of many of, I've got to decide who's right or wrong. And you have to understand, I was sexually abused as a child, and because I didn't speak when I needed to, black and white, I had to decide who was right and who was wrong because that kept me safe. So it wasn't just my default, it was my salvation, you understand? Something that I had to really fight because I want to decide who's right or wrong because if I decide who's right or wrong, then I'm safe. Do you see how that happens? But you know what? God is greater than the injured child inside. And I rule over that injured child. Does that injured child still try to rise up? Do I feel condemned about it? I just talk to the child. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not that child anymore. I don't have to decide who's right or wrong. I give that to God. Set me free. Okay. I just got something from God. Okay. Uh, you, Pastor Jason, you remember you, you, you had uh, talked about a visitation from a demonic spirit. I had another one. I've had a visitation from demonic spirits that wake you up. I'm, I'm not, no fear, no fear, okay? I'm just going to tell you something. This thing has visited me for five, six, or seven times throughout my life. Wakes me up in the middle of the night. This demonic spirit is something that talks and puts pressure and my body starts succumbing to it and trying to go in into a, almost a, your body starts reacting to the demon because it is flesh and that thing is saying talk 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 suggest da, 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 da. the only way to stop it is I talk and I have to keep talking or it talks it's just that intense intense say intense but here's the thing, because that thing tried to visit me, it's almost like it's, it's almost like I'm on its list. In fact, God said, I said, was it something? He said, no, you're just on the list. You know, spirits visit familiar spirits. You know, if you had a divorce around December or if you had a death around something, guess what? Guess what around December what happens? A little visiting spirit that tries to see grief. You know, so demons are dumb, but, you know, they're also very consistent. And so this thing visited me, and this is what came out of my lips. I walk in love. I walk in love. I walk in love. I haven't judged. I walk in love. I walk in love. I walk in love. I walk in love. I have to keep saying it or it gets a word in. I walk in love. I walk in love. I walk in love. And I felt that thing just going. Walking in love is very powerful because God is love. You can use it with a sick child at home. You can use it over your checkbook. Walking in love is huge. It's not, sometimes it's not the big things. The devil is trying to get us in the little things. Because now listen, in the United States, that is what is in the air. The polarization, pick a side, condemn somebody, defend somebody. It's what you see on the news. That's what you see everywhere because that spirit has been released in this last time. Because they know if I can get you to violate God's law, I can give place and I can stop the blessing. Stop. Interfere. Make it not. Maybe want 100%. Maybe not getting but 10%. He can interfere. He can make it hard on you. But I can have, listen, 100% of my will released into what I need to, my faith, if I will engage the Holy Spirit. When I say don't judge, in myself, I cannot do that. This is my fallen nature. But I can engage the Holy Spirit who will help me walk throughout the day to go, hey, hey. So I keep my wholeness. I keep my pie full. So when I release faith, and I release it every day, I've got power available. It, it makes much 
power available. Does it make sense? God is looking for those lively stones that will do damage in the kingdom. I believe we all can do that. We can all ask the Holy Spirit to engage us. If there's something burning inside of you, I got this hurt, I can't deal with it, that's what he wants. He wants the pain. He paid the price for that pain. He wants you to quit holding on to it. Yeah, but it's not that easy. Let me tell you something. I kind of been there, done that. Yes, it is. It can be a layering effect, but you got to start somewhere. You didn't get here overnight, but you know what? With the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you can get out overnight. <laughs> I've come in here one way, and I've walked out free. Chunked that thing off. I told people, because we used to do, women and women used to be, at the very beginning, ICU. I said, we'd have to counsel you 20 years, and you don't have 20 years. You need the moving of the Holy Spirit to get this thing off of you. That's why we come expecting. That's what I'm expecting about this faith seminar. All right. I think that's where I want to end. Yes. Let's stand up. Because either that or I got 20 more minutes. <laughs> and I don't. <laughs> Did you learn something tonight? Have I challenged you? or you? Can, I just don't want any guilt and condemnation. I'm going to tell you right now. We all have to fight the flesh. Pastor Jason has to fight the flesh. My husband, who wakes up singing, Hello. Yeah, I have to get coffee. I have to, I have to get, I get up early to crucify the flesh so when he gets up, I'm ready for him. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. I mean, I just don't wake up singing glory, hallelujah. But I'll be, he does, so that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I know you're not judging me. <laughs> I know you're not judging me. But I, we all have to today, God, I'm not going to compare myself Today, I'm going to forgive. Today, I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to go into the envy or, or jealousy. Today, you know, I do that. I, I daily tell my flesh what I'm not going to do. I also tell the devil what he's not going to do. Every day, I'm armed. Do I mess up? Woo. 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 Ooh. It's good. <laughs> flesh is good. But God is more powerful. And he wants to heal the broken hearted. He don't want you to walk around and live in that kind of pain. Life is too short. The shortest thing we'll ever do is live down here. And we can have, like God said, days as heaven on earth. How about that? With freedom that we can live and not wake up with that name, not wake up with that pain, but wake up in him be found in him not having my own righteousness because that's what default is but having the righteousness of God believing in him Father I just thank you for tonight I thank you that the Holy Spirit is here and Holy Spirit you are ready to take charge and right now we're asking we don't want to judge we know your word says to don't judge we know it's our default but you're greater and we're asking you to alert us. And this is what we'll do. We will repent. You cleanse us from all unrighteousness of that. We will back up. We will release words of wholesome words of life. And Father, we will bless those that curse us. We will pray for those that persecute us. Father, we will not allow that feeling to not go addressed by the word of God. In my heart, I control by the Spirit of God, my suke. And God, you're inside of me to empower me to do, to will, and to do of your good pleasure. So we thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>